Hi guys, uh, today we're looking at chapter 14, social marketing and not-for-profit marketing. On the face of it, you think, yeah, this is boring, but really, when you look at it, there are some seriously good benefits of um, social marketing and what non-profits do for us in the community and the world in general. So guys, I'm going to quickly fly through this chapter. Um, there's a lot of material on your Moodle site explaining it. This is also shown more effectively by actually looking at examples uh, rather than the large theory behind it. So let's quickly go through Now the key thing is social marketing aims to change behavior for the good. We're trying to communicate whether it's government bodies, countries, companies, messages to a target market saying, guys, think about your behavior, think about how you approach this and if you can change it because it's really not helping the planet yourselves anyone so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to change behavior for social good that's it changing behavior of anyone is incredibly difficult um so guys this is a massive cha challenge and when we go through this and uh, i will also be showing you a website of some of the people who do it brilliantly um, the National Social Marketing Centre in the UK, they were absolute pioneers in this area. You'll see that there's some significant challenges, but you get to use all of your marketing skills to help. And uh, a lot of students, when they look at this, go, I never thought I could do this with a marketing degree. And a lot of them are. It's uh, really fulfilling. Okay, guys, again, yeah, here's a, a classic one. Two thirds of Australians are obese. I'm one of them. Um, sitting on my butt for seven weeks um, didn't help um, for sorting out your Moodle site, but definitely this is a major challenge. We're now the second fattest country in the world, so how would you go about doing it is one of the things they look at, and people come up with campaigns. This website here, the NSMC, these are the guys that I'll be going through in detail. They're the best. All right, let me go through it. Okay, what's it going on? So look, social marketing means to change voluntary behaviour in individuals, but also to influence policy from state government, local council, national government. How do we do this? So we're going to look at some of the interesting points. I'm not overly too excited about for what social marketing is not. It's always bored the crap out of me. Let's just see what it is, what it does, and that will do. Um, it is a great... Um, subject that we offer in the discipline, um, high student satisfaction, they all love it. I've taught it before, it's taught really well by Dr. Jenny Algie and Dr. Nadia Zait Noon, who they're just experts in the field. Um, now, what is social marketing, guys? Look, typical textbook stuff, here's a thousand definitions, but the bottom line is the two big ones Kotler is alleged, I mean, he got into this age ago, but these are the ones I like. You've got Kotler, Roberto and Lee. This is the textbook I used to use. Uh, is the use of principles and techniques to influence a target audience to accept, reject, modify or abandon a behaviour for the benefit. These are the big ones. Accept the message, reject. This is what we play on. Um, groups of society as a whole. Donovan, again, great Australian. Both of these guys are great Australian researchers in the area. Same old story, guys. Let's um, use the four Ps to analyze, plan, execute programs to influence the voluntary and involuntary behavior of target audiences to improve it. Again, it's influence. It's what we do as a profession, as marketers. But this time, instead of go and eat 38 more nuggets at KFC and wash it down with a Coke, we're trying to actually help you and say, hey, let's do something of value. Let's maybe educate the population and a KFC-based diet is probably not the greatest for long-term health. So, guys, um, you've got that there. Again, here we have, um, this is just a little academic um, play that we have of how many experts and what they consider important. Oh, that's nice. Again, what I'm more interested in, guys, let's have a look at the scope of social marketing. When you look at these issues, I went, Gee, these apply to me, but definitely apply to your age group. And this is uh, 
exactly what the mini report question I have down for you is designed to do, to get you to really think about your behaviours, behaviour change, how do we reach you, texting and driving. I mean, how many times have we seen that? Alcohol consumption. Well, gee, I haven't had to pick up um, guys in your generation um, after a, a night out on the town with uh, my kids. Um, yeah, recycling. Yeah, energy drink consumption during exams. Gambling. Having a slap on the pokies or online. Smartphone addiction. How many times have you been told, put the phone down and talk to a human being? Healthy eating. Interesting. Youth volunteering. Safe sex. Smoking. Organ donation. Porn addiction. I don't know what that is. Gun control. Um, so guys, all of these things. Food waste. Animal captivity. Uh, credit card debt. Everything we do. Um, we can address with social marketing for the betterment. So yeah, you say I did. I got six credit points for marketing. My ass. You got the ability to actually engage with the world's problems, look at them as an educated um, citizen, and say, hey, yes, we can do better uh, for the planet. Okay, so this is why marketing is relevant for you, just as a citizen. All right, again, what do we have? Healthier eating for the Australian Defence Forces, that's nice. Um, guys, I'm more interested in this. Have a look at the terminology. What are the benchmarking criteria? This is pretty much saying, as I've said, understand your target audience. Guys, you've got to understand the people who are engaging in these behaviours that you want to modify. If you don't know your target market, um, you're wasting your time. And again, Andreasen's six uh, criteria is one of the well-established benchmarks. Um, you've got a behavior change, audience research, uh, formative research, understand the consumer and orientation of intervention, how we're gonna do it. In other words, what exchange was to be given up by the target audience. There's a whole heap of stuff here, guys, that is just common sense. But what we're saying is with the marketing research tools we have of observation, in-depth interviews, um, go and find out, see what really matters to this population. Don't go in um, and say, oh yeah, this is what you need, accept the behavior because it's, it's logical for you guys. Um, that doesn't make sense. Right? You need to understand it from the person's eyes. What really drives it? Um, the TEDx video is a brilliant one in terms of they talk to kids that were selling cocaine and they ask them why they sell cocaine. And I can assure you, I couldn't believe the answers to this. So it's well worth having a look at. So guys, you know, what are the marketing frameworks? Again, look, these are just the, these are the big ones. Uh, Walsh, Lefebvre, Andresen, these are the, the big professors in the area. You can see a lot of these words are exactly what you, we use, right? Insights, behavior, uh, you know, audience research exchange, nothing new here. But again, behavior change, um, I've got material in the Moodle book, Prochaska's model. You need to know it. You need to look at my mini lecture on um, the mini reports. Um, it'll really give you good insights into what's required. Audience research, segmentation, exchange. Look, we know the marketing mix. Um, this is simple. This concept of competition is a big one because realistically, this is where it gets. We have to give up something in a lot of the times. Um, yeah, you got to understand the the behaviour. Um, you look at it giving up junk food but i like junk food it makes me feel good um to eat celery like what the as a, as a parent i can assure you i've had that many um, arguments with children going eat this food it's good for you no no i've got friends whose kids don't know what any green food is um it is nuggets and chips and peanut butter um yeah, how do we convince people to move A to B? It's not that simple. Logic doesn't work a lot of the time. So again, um, look, one of the other key things I want to wrap up here is to understand there are three streams of social marketing, and this is important because, um, yeah, we have a, a friend of mine, Professor Ross Gordon, Mass came from Stirling, which was one of the universities really pioneering this research. He's now head, I think, of the Australian, Australasian 
Social Marketing Association. Um, he was pushing, you can have your commercials, but you've got to also influence policymakers. Um, the people that can put the dollars in, change the regulation. So you've got three approaches. Downstream is pretty much we're just focusing on the individual. You need to change for this reason. You need to do this. Midstream is you've got community level, uh, religious organisations, families, friends, clubs, all of this. Upstream is pretty much we're influencing the government. We want national rules on this. We want national um, regulations here applying it. And you have to convince politicians. This is what you need to look at. It's good for the society. And very much when you're doing research in social marketing as an academic, a lot of it was getting the message across that, hey, we are actually making a difference here. Please support what we're trying to do. So we've got all of those issues there. Um, what is and what is not social marketing? I don't care. I'm not interested. I'm more interested in what is social marketing. Um, you know, now, not-for-profit marketing, I'm going to do a little mini lecture on um, because this is absolutely disgraceful that they do two pages in the textbook. Um, it's a major area. So we're going to do it then. So guys, look, social marketing, behavior change, think of yourselves and think how many messages have you been exposed to asking you to think about your behavior for your own good? Yeah, you know, how do you react when boomers tell you how to behave or how to think? <laughs> Not particularly well. All right, guys, uh, let's see how we go with this.